Welcome to my new studio room! If you watched the previous episode, then you will know we are in our new studio that uh, one of our great generals had helped me make. And if you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't seen the last episode, well go fucking check it out right now! So thank you to all everyone who has supported me and uh, my fellow general Squish the Seal in uh, our uh, previous video. Yeah, we had a lot of fun making it and uh, it took a lot of effort to edit it. Not a lot. I'm not, uh, I don't want to over exaggerate anything. But we had a lot of fun making it, so uh, I'd appreciate it if you guys give it a quick check out and uh, maybe tell your significant other they may enjoy it. Or maybe not, I don't know. Wait, I really don't know. Check it out if you haven't checked that. But for the majority of you who will probably click this video, you are ready to see an epic cinematic of the UPSR Corvette XL. Bitch, roll it. This is the UPSR Exploration Corvette XL. This larger variant was best used for exploration missions on other planets and star systems. The craft was equipped with brand new sensor equipment to better survey planets and systems. Because the craft was redesigned at a larger size, it was able to hold the Class 1 hyperdrive to allow for fast travel to nearby star systems. The ship had almost doubled its original amount of thrusters to keep up its speed with the added bulk. Much was changed about the bridge now holding two seats, one for operating subsystems and one for piloting. This bridge allowed for great visibility and easy piloting. Behind the bridge, on the lower deck, were the crew quarters and med bay. Although small, the crew quarters allowed members to rest and heal before and after every expedition. On the upper deck was the mess hall. This area held a small kitchen for crew members to eat and socialize during flight. Continuing down the hall, you were meted with an armory to gear up before every mission in the main airlock. This airlock led to the newly added cargo bay. This bay held a small hydrogen rover that could be deployed by opening the back hangar door. The rover was used to explore on the ground and in caves where the Corvette could not reach. On the opposite side was the entrance to the engine room to allow for quick repairs. Because some components were within the engine pods, they could be repaired by opening the top hatches. On the belly side of the engine pods were the landing gear. On the top of the ship was the only offensive weapon on board, which was the EMP turret, used in self-defense if pirates came into close contact. The ship was slightly larger than its original design, but was this way to accommodate every new component. Even at a slightly larger size, the XL model still kept the same slender profile as the original. Even though the UPSR Corvette wasn't heavily armed, it was top of its class when exploring other planets and systems.
Wow, now that was a cinematic. Um, it's a little different from my usual cinematic stats because this is an exploration ship. It's not uh, meant for combat, no explosions, no uh, huge combat, but I hope that this nice relaxing music and uh, cool visuals really help. Also, I don't know if it's gonna, the audio is gonna sound weird because uh, I haven't fully soundproofed this room yet and uh, so it may sound a little echoey, so I apologize if the audio is a little weird. But bear with me, bear with me. So if the cinematic didn't really show enough of the ship, I thought I might as well do a quick little walkthrough of the ship anyways. So in the bottom, there are two floors that we have. Uh, there's the, the lower deck, which is the habitable area. This is where, you know, the crew quarter would sleep. And there's a, a toilet, a bathroom right here. And then the survival kit. I couldn't really fit uh, a med bay but i thought you know uh in a ship this size a med bay is a little overkill so the survival kit works perfectly you know it sneaks in right there you can still spawn at the ship and you can still heal up the only thing you can't do is obviously change your suit so uh, uh that's one one downfall of it uh the air vent is right here so uh that's just obvious just for uh air filtration so if we do close this area it's perfectly sealed off. So if there is a breach in another room, you can stay in this room or spawn in this room and still have O2 and be able to breathe. So when we come out, unlike the original design, this Corvette can house two crew members. It is fully piloted by one person, but uh, the extra cockpit is either for another crewmate to help you with, um, there's a turret so you can control the turret on top or it's uh, honestly just a backup seat. You know, if this one gets damaged because it is right out in the open um, and it, like there's glass everywhere that you can get shot from every angle. You know, if you want something a little more uh, uh, protected, you can just use this cockpit. And we have this nice transparent LCD for a cool little visual. So coming to the back on the upper deck, we have this little uh i would kind of say lobby area i guess um if i were to change anything i think i would add um maybe a, a seat like or like a couch or whatever just kind of you know this is clearly the you know hangout area there's like windows you got some viewing ports you can eat 
Um, and then you have your armory that leads straight to the airlock. Now the airlock and this back area was probably the most important part of my, my design, what I wanted to add to this Corvette. Because of the size and you know, it wouldn't really be used for attacking and it was used for exploration, I thought there wouldn't be a, I thought to myself, I'm like, well, why not have like a, a small little craft that can explore the planet and, or you have this little cargo area uh, that um, kind of gives purpose to the Corvette. So like um, you could carry extra cargo. Maybe this Corvette could be used for um, cargo missions or supply missions, and maybe it's used for exploration. So then you have these little exploration crafts, or maybe you have uh, different devices, an antenna. It could literally house a bomb, and then maybe your Corvette is disguised as as some sort of transport cruiser, but then you actually sabotage like a mothership with like this big warhead that's actually in here. I mean, the possibilities are endless, but I thought that this little rover would be perfect for uh, this Corvette. Another thing that I'm thinking of that I would change is maybe have like um, an airlock or like another door so you don't always have to open up the hangar bay, as well as I would probably make the hangar bay one block bigger uh, because it it was pretty hard to uh, create this rover and still have like space to walk around. Uh, honestly, I could just put the connector that it, it connects up to um, in the rear of the rover. So then I could park it uh, a little bit ahead and then I could have this walkway across. I originally had that, but a um, little bit on a time crunch. So I thought I might as well just kind of do this quickly. And I think it still fits uh, pretty okay. Uh, now, if we come to this side, <laughs> unfortunately, it, you you get stuck when you uh, walk up because of this control panel, uh, but that's fine. Um, obviously, a redesign of that would be maybe I just put like a, a full block here and then uh, a control panel on the wall because all this controls is the hangar door and you just open it and you have this nice transition to it opening. And as you saw through that little uh, clip, it did get st stuck uh on uh this part so what i could do is um at least on uh these outer areas here maybe i could do it now as i just take these blocks maybe no because that would uh yeah that would stop the <laughs> yeah that wouldn't allow the rover to get in but you know uh there you could fiddle around with it and uh figure out different ways to uh make this smoothly come in and out of the shuttle and then because he had this um, open engine design so that you could access the engine and I felt like that was a very key part of uh, the creator's design so um, I decided to have like a whole room designated to repairing so it, coming back in here you get pretty much every component that you need you have a uh, you have cargo containers that are accessible here you have your O2 generator right here and then right below you have the main point of the Corvette, of an exploration Corvette especially, is to have some sort of jump drive, being able to jump system to system, being able to travel. And someone mentioned in the comments, shout out to you, is uh, they mentioned that it's hard to charge a jump drive if you don't have a reactor. So this Corvette actually has every kind of power ability possible. So it has, I believe, four batteries, uh, two or one small reactor. I don't know if that's enough or sufficient enough to charge a jump drive, but it has that. And obviously the amazing hydrogen engine. And this looks great. So I think having this exposed area is great. These little orange lights kind of give it that uh, uh, engine room feel. So yeah. Now something that I thought would be pretty cool and someone mentioned using hangar doors, like the airtight hangar doors to slide across like the top or probably bottom to get inside the engine nacelles to like, you know, fix them. And I wanted to do that and I tried it out, but it looked really weird with uh, the airtight hangar door. Just, it didn't really like fit with this like flush clean design. So I thought if I just took doors, uh, offset doors and I put them on the side, it would make a complete flush area so you could um, 
access the gyroscope that were uh, on the outside. You can't really get into everywhere, so like you can't get to that thruster, but I mean, technically, you could just fly down here and repair that thruster. Um, that uh, and then that uh, conveyor you can kind of get at from here, but it was more of just to if you had components right here, uh, like the gyroscopes, you could repair them. And if this was modded, I'd actually probably somehow fit the gyroscopes inside and put shield generators here. I think that would look pretty cool. And you could fit easily two small shield generators. This energy shields mod is probably my favorite mod ever. And if I delete the gyroscopes, you can see that I have um, uh, the hydrogen tanks in here. So uh, if they do happen to blow up, at least they're on the outside of the ship, not being able to harm the inside. So all in all, I did do a pretty big redesign on this Corvette. I really like how this one is just so small. Like it's got, like it's very impressive that he built a functional ship uh, with at, at this size. Like I, I still like how you know it's it's just so simple. It's you you come in and you you can get to the cockpit and there's still like quite a bit of room to like walk in. I mean, if you were to do a, a simpler redesign and the creator wanted to keep his original design, the only thing I would suggest is probably, unfortunately, download the DLC and then maybe add like um, on this side of your ship, uh, like a little uh, living area. Or you could just, um, you could take one of those uh, ton passageway blocks, put it on a side like it's a bed or something, or put a rotor and then uh, add a small rotor head and then build out of small ship blocks like a little bed area or a little desk or something. Honestly, I, I still think his little ship is pretty awesome. I, uh, I just hope that you accept my uh, redesign as a cool uh, addition to your faction. Yeah, and I said that this is the XL model, so uh, essentially you have this expedition craft, which is very small, very sleek, you know, one man crew and that's it. And then you have the XL model, which is for those uh, longer journeys, those bigger missions where um, you need a larger crew, you need a couple, but not too big, not like, uh, not an insane, not an insanely large crew to uh, pilot this vessel. Well, this video is already long enough, so I don't want to drag it on for too long. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving it a like. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. I hope you enjoy my content and check out my other videos if you haven't already. And yeah, and let me know in the comments what I should change and what I should do next. So uh, yeah, having a lot of fun with these redesigns and I'm having so much fun, you know, just fooling around, messing around and seeing what other content I can make. So uh, please give me your, I, I, I love feedback. Yeah, leave comments. Uh, I will change the scenery it looks a little uh i mean i don't mind it it's floral but i feel like with my design you know we need some chalk empire-esque you know i hope the lighting's better as well i hope my lights aren't shining into your eyes anymore and you can see me a little more uh clearly that's all i have for today thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of chonkers redesign this is the final episode of three and i hope to see you all soon and as always they say Stay brilliant, stay creative, Chonkers out.